Demos, and I wrote the script for Sparta, it was because we had cut Demos out of another thing. Yeah. So I was like, cool, I'll use it for that. If I'm gonna do anything now, I'm gonna make sure that there's always valid, like like a valid sort of indicator for anything so that you, you could go back and you could look at Even it. Even in death, a Spartan stands tall for battle. You are a Spartan, are you not? Yes, Kratos. If you follow this channel, you would know that one of my favorite games in the God of War series is Ghost of Sparta. The graphics for a PSP game were unreal. The tone of the story was the darkest in the series. Kratos as a character was more complex than he was in previous Greek games. The story also made Kratos more human, and this naturally helped us sympathize with his actions a little bit more. The game truly was underrated by gamers and even most of the community. But despite all my praise for this game, Ghost of Sparta has one big problem. The third act. Brother, you are safe now. <laughs> you see, after you rescue Demos, he tells Kratos how much he hates him for abandoning him when he was a kid. This leads to a fight between the two brothers, Thanatos intervenes, Kratos saves him, and then they are best friends once again. A Spartan never lets his back hit the ground. Right, brother? In five minutes, Demos went from absolutely hating Kratos to embracing him as a brother again. This change of heart is not impossible, it just needed more time in between for it to feel more natural. Now, what if I told you that originally this wasn't an issue? What if I tell you that Demos was going to be in the game a lot longer? But what if I also told you that the game in which this happened wasn't Ghost of Sparta, but instead it was God of War 3? Sun has returned. I bring the destruction of Olympus. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, about a week ago, Midgard Chronicler and I made a huge discovery. We discovered that Demos was originally going to be in God of War 3. I'm not gonna spend any time proving this fact because that's what Chronicler did in his video. So obviously, if you haven't watched his video, I recommend you stop this one and watch his first. He'll go over some truly mind-blowing evidence. But what I want to do in this video instead is take all that evidence Chronicler discussed in this video and turn it into what this original God of War 3 story might have looked like. But I need to warn you that this isn't a typical theory on the channel. This discovery might change how you view the story of God of War 3. Because in many ways, this original story was going to be more emotional. This is because this story was most likely written by Cory Barlog himself. After the success of God of War 2, Cory Barlog was once again chosen to direct God of War 3. But sometime during the development of the game, Cory stepped down as director and Stig took his place. With this change in director came, well, a lot of changes, including changes to the story. But a point I want to argue in this video is that Cory Barlog's story didn't go away completely. You see, God of War 2 was released on March 2007, and Cory left Santa Monica Studios on November 2007. This means the studio was working with Cory's story for a couple of months before he left. In other words, a lot of work was already done for the original story. Work that couldn't simply be thrown away. This means that within the copy of God of War 3 you have, there are bits and pieces that were initially written for Cory's story. They just remain hidden right under our noses because we knew nothing about the original story. But now we do. The story was most likely going to center around the prophecy of the marked warrior. And what you'll see is that, when you put Demos into the story of God of War 3, a lot of things in that game start to make sense. For example, let's start with Hades. Have you ever noticed that Hades being in his realm doesn't make much sense given the current events happening on Mount Olympus? You see him a little at the beginning and then he's suddenly chilling in his realm. But shouldn't he be on Mount Olympus helping his brothers fight off the Titan invasion? especially since one of his brothers already died. I guess you could say that Hades needed to protect his realm from Kratos, or maybe even that he hated Kratos so much that he risked Olympus being overthrown. These answers are good enough to prevent this from becoming a plot hole. But you will see that by simply placing Demos into the picture, Hades' hurry to get back to his realm makes a lot of sense. In the original story, Hades would have been the one to have control over Demos. He would have been the one who had imprisoned him since he was a kid not Thanatos. Now, how do I know this? Well, one of the concept arts by Andy Park shows Kratos fighting Hades. 
But if you look in the background, you will see a shadowy figure trapped in chains. This shadowy figure is none other than Deimos himself. Now, I know this seems like a far cry from the Deimos design you are used to, but what you need to understand is that this wasn't always Deimos design. In God of War 3, Andy Park went through many iterations, but ultimately settled with this one. Now, this is where things start to get really interesting. Because if we look at another concept art of Kratos fighting Hades, you will see that the chained person is once again in the shot. And if you compare this silhouette with the final design for Deimos, you will notice that they are the same character. The original reason Hades had to stop fighting the Titans to go back to his realm wasn't because he hated Kratos or needed to protect his realm. It was because Kratos was going to release the other possible marked warrior. So when Zeus heard that Kratos was on his way to free him, he quickly gave Hades the command to stop fighting the Titans and instead stop Kratos. And this would have been the context for fighting Hades, not getting his soul so you could get out of the realm, something Kratos had done plenty of times without it. But hold on a second. After Deimos was freed, what exactly would have happened next in the story? This is where I believe the issue with Ghost of Sparta's third act would have been solved. Because in the original story, Kratos would have freed Deimos near the beginning of the story. Instead of having one fight, Kratos and Deimos would have fought throughout the game multiple times. Just like the mural in God of War 2 seems to indicate. Deimos would fight Kratos for the same reason he fought him in Ghost of Sparta. He hated Kratos for abandoning him when he was a kid. And Kratos would fight Deimos back because, from his point of view, this mysterious marked warrior was getting in the way of his vengeance against the gods. Now, believe it or not, there's more evidence that suggests Santa Monica was planning to tell a similar story with Kratos and Deimos since the very beginning. Of course, you all know about the secret cutscene in God of War 1 that mentions Deimos for the first time. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the mysterious assassin. And I think this will show you how telling a story in a video game isn't as easy as it seems. Because now, I'm gonna take a break from discussing God of War 3's original story and talk about yet another story that was cut from the series. A trilogy that was originally planned for cell phone games. A trilogy that started with God of War Betrayal. In the story of God of War Betrayal, Kratos gets framed by a mysterious hooded character with the death of Argos. From that point on, the whole story of the game is about Kratos chasing after this mysterious assassin. Long story short, he never gets a hold of him and we never learn who the assassin was. Because of this, fans had a couple of theories regarding his identity, the top candidates being Zeus and Hermes. Even I made a video about this a while back. And soon after I uploaded this video, I came across another God of War Betrayal video where one commenter claimed to be the director of God of War Betrayal itself. And there was one thing he said in that comment that seemed very odd to me. But it was also something that had a ring of truth to it. He said, Originally, the intent was to have a series of God of War mobile games that told an overarching story of Deimos, Kratos' brother seeking revenge. It would all ultimately culminate in a scene where Kratos has to choose between finding peace through having his family back or killing his brother to stop his tyranny. The family would be watching as he ultimately chooses to defeat Deimos by the player tapping rapidly to hold his head underwater as he watches his family burn away in agony with fire from Hades and typical God of War emotional and physical brutality. The director then goes on to talk about how this story was cancelled, and instead, parts of it went to other God of War games. For example, in this cancelled story, Kratos had to choose between being with his family or stopping his evil brother. This moment was moved to Chains of Olympus, where in the end, Kratos is given the choice of being with his daughter or stopping Persephone from destroying the world. Isn't it interesting that one of the most emotional moments in the series was originally going to be in a mobile game like Betrayal? Anyway, the reason I wanted to bring up this last trilogy is because I wanted to show you that Santa Monica always wanted to tell a story with Kratos and Deimos. So after the cell phone trilogy was cancelled, they decided to place Deimos in God of War 3 instead. And this is the story we're discussing today. But anyway, after Deimos was freed, news of this would have sent the gods of Olympus into panic mode. Because now, not only did Poseidon and Hades were dead, but also the two best candidates for the marked warrior prophecy were running around Greece. Two very angry marked warriors. One because he was betrayed by the gods, among other things. And the other because the gods had imprisoned him since he was a child. Now, after the fight with Hades, Kratos would ponder who the marked warrior was. At first, he wouldn't pay too much attention to this mystery, as he still needed to get revenge on Zeus and all of Olympus. But as the story progressed, Kratos and the marked warrior's path would constantly lead them to the same locations. Every time they would come across each other, they would fight. But before one of them could kill the other, something would happen that would disrupt the fight. 
most likely an Olympian god wanting to kill both marked warriors to stop the prophecy from coming true. This would happen many times until both marked warriors would face each other one last time. This fight would decide once and for all who the true marked warrior was. Most likely, this last fight with Themos became the first fight with Zeus in the final game. And once again, you will notice that something from the original story still remains in the final game. So let me ask you something. Do you know what's the name of the theme that plays in the first fight with Zeus? Come on. You guys know this, it's, it's only the best theme in the series. The theme that plays during this fight goes by the odd name of Brothers of Blood. This name makes absolutely no sense with the story we have, but it makes perfect sense if Demos was originally part of the story. This theme, or at least the name of it, was made when Santa Monica was developing the game under the assumption that Demos would be in the game. I'm sure they didn't bother changing it because it would have taken time and they also figured that no one would notice. And they were right, this whole time I've been listening to this theme without asking about its odd name. Now, let's get back to the story. I think this final fight would have been the big emotional moment of the game. Because I believe in this fight, Kratos would have killed the mysterious marked warrior for good. But before turning his case towards Zeus, Kratos would approach the body of the marked warrior and remove his mask. This is when Kratos would realize that he had killed his own brother. And it's possible that during this plot twist, the game would take the player to a flashback to when Kratos and Demos were just kids. This would explain why God of War 3 also has a concept art of Kid Kratos and Kid Demos fighting as Cyclops together. This is also why Bruno Velasquez had access to a 3D model of Demos from the PlayStation 3 era instead of the model from Ghost of Sparta. This flashback would most likely end the same way Kratos' vision ended in Ghost of Sparta, with Demos being captured by Ares and taken to the underworld. Now, this last scene would fade to present time where Kratos would be staring down at the corpse of his dead brother. And the reason I said earlier that this would have been the big emotional moment of the game is because Kratos would have ended exactly where he began. The event that began his downfall, the killing of his family, would once again be mirrored with him killing his brother. Instead of being blinded by ambition and glory, Kratos would have been similarly blinded by his need for vengeance. In other words, the story of God of War 3 would have been one hell of a Greek tragedy. Now with his brother dead, Kratos would turn his gaze once again towards Zeus. After all you have sought, after all you have sacrificed, it ends in another stunning failure! <laughs> and I believe from this point on, the story would unfold almost identical to the one we got. In the final game, it was Pandora's death that gave Kratos the extra push to destroy Olympus once and for all. While in the original story, it would have been the death of Demos. And this might explain yet again another odd moment in God of War 3. Just listen to what Zeus says to Gaia here. Your pawn has failed you, Gaia. Perhaps you should have chosen the other one. In the final story, the line, you should have chosen the other one, doesn't make much sense unless you see it as a small tease for the Ghost of Sparta game. But in the original story, this line makes a lot more sense. Originally, Zeus was rubbing it into Gaia's face that she chose the wrong marked warrior. Because the marked warrior she chose, Kratos, turned his back on the Titans. And choosing Demos for Gaia was no longer an option. Because Gaia made it to Olympus a few minutes after Demos had died. I'm sure there would have been more to this story. For example, what was Athena's role in this story? Would she have been the one to tell Kratos to free the other marked warrior? What about certain events that happened in the final game? Would Kratos have to raise the labyrinth and extinguish the fire of Olympus? Or are these story elements that were original to the final story? If I've learned anything from making this video is that certain moments in a story might feel a little bit out of place because there's more to them. Some things are kept in because, from the perspective of the player, they'll never be able to guess that a line like, you should have chosen the other one, belonged to a whole other story. Instead, the player is going to interpret this line with the things he knows. So suddenly, this simple line takes on a whole different meaning. And if you think this stuff only happened in the Greek God of War games, you are gravely mistaken. I'm looking at you, dead giants of God of War 2018. And look, I'm not pointing out these things so you would get mad at Santa Monica Studios and demand all the release content. I'm sure if you look closely at some of your favorite games, you will see that they do have things like this all over the place. 
and I am 100% okay with that. These are my favorite videos to make. And if you made it this far in the video, I'm willing to bet that you too like these types of videos. This is why I recommend you watch my video on the lost level of Sparta from God of War 2. That video is identical to this one, so I'm sure you're gonna find it just as interesting. And once again, I'm gonna recommend you watch Medgar Chronicles' video on Demos. Just like me, he had been doing research on this topic for quite some time. He even discovered things that ultimately made me realize I was on the right track. So please, go and support another awesome God of War YouTuber by watching his video, leaving a like, sharing, and of course, subscribing. But with that said, now I want to give a big thanks to all of my members for supporting this channel monthly. I know I say this a lot, but this channel would not be here without you guys. Doing YouTube as your job is nerve-wracking at best, so it's always good to know that I have fans that are willing to support the channel no matter what. So, guys and gals, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I would also like to thank everyone who likes and shares my videos. I know it doesn't seem like much, but trust me, it really does help. And with that said, thanks for watching, and remember, go forth in the name of Olympus.